Hello guys, so today this video will be a quick unboxing and installation of a Z-Wave controlled um, light switch and uh, uh, we have a light upstairs, a security light um, outside of our bedroom that have a regular switch that's not Z-Wave controlled and uh, it have to be turned on and turned off with your hand. So with this Z-Wave controlled um, switch, I'll be able to control the light uh, wirelessly and also be able to set up a schedule for it to turn on and turn off automatically at night. And uh, during the daytime, it will automatically turn off. And this switch from GE will help us do that. So I'm gonna do unboxing first. And later on, I will do a installation of the switch to replace the existing one and also the configuration and pairing of the Z-Wave device with your uh, home security control panel. Um, you might have some other like um, uh, home automation hubs that will be able to use this switch, but this review, um, I will configure it with our home security system, which is the front point security, um, security system. And uh, let's get started then. Sorry, I'm holding my phone with one hand, so uh, excuse me if I, I'm doing it slowly. And let's see, okay. Try to open it. And I got it on Amazon, I'll post the link below. It's, it's a little bit pricey, but for the thing it does, I think it's, it's worth the price. Okay, open the box. And also, I think it says this includes both a white and almond colored panel to suit your home better. So there's the instructional manual, I think. Let's see what's inside. So basically, you have some other um, options available. For example, if you install this panel, and you want to add a add-on switch, you can do that and pair it and to control this this panel's light that's connected. Uh, of course, here it gives you a whole bunch of options that will work with this uh, switch. Um, anyway, let's continue. And I think this is actually the manual. Yeah. Quite long. Inwall smart switch, and I think this is the model number. Just making sure you are getting the correct one because some other ones that look similar, it might not be the Z Wave switch, it's an add on. So, this is actually okay, let's see here, uh, model number 12722. Um, that dash 2, I'm not sure if it works or not, but it should be 12722. This is a switch that you want to get if you want to convert your existing um, light switch to a Z-Wave from the GE, okay? So I think we'll skip the installation instructions because all those are pretty generic. Uh, if you open um, your wall outlet, you'll be presented with a limited amount of wires um, that you can connect. So. But um, make sure you, before you do anything, first thing is turn off your main switch that controls the light. Otherwise you might get ex executed, ex ex electrocuted, not executed, sorry. Um, yes, okay. So basically it replaces your old panel with, with this new Z-Wave panel. I guess it draws the battery, it draws the power from your existing or outlet so you don't need a battery or anything like that and it, it's I mean it looks very similar to whatever um, ink panel switch you already have later on I'll show you guys in the video and, and do a comparison but um, this is the switch and how it looks like 120 volt for the United States and inside I think we have a few more items which is the almond colored um, the, the switch, the switch part, plastic switch part. And uh, um, I think the white works better because the almond one, it just looks outdated and old. But um, 
if you press on the switch, you'll see the two side is um, it doesn't recess. It's basically two buttons on two sides. So that's why it's able to control itself by turning it on or off automatically. If it's a physical switch, you will be like if you press one side, it will be stuck over there. Okay. And the crazy thing is you can actually press two sides at the same time. So further indication that it's actually two buttons on top and bottom. Okay. So um, next, I guess uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, switch on the door. Uh, before that, we we'll have to turn off the power that's supplying. Um, we we'll have to turn off the whatever the uh, the main switch. Okay. So let me go ahead and do that, and we'll continue. So this is the light we uh, actually wanted to turn on at dawn and turn off in the morning, um, because the light sensor doesn't work as good. So we're just set it on a timer. Um, well, let's go inside and uh, take a look. All right, and uh, first thing first is you actually have to make sure your power to your the switch that you want to change is turned off. So for example, over here, the security light is, um, is in our bedroom. So I want to turn off the switch over there on your main circuit breaker. And if it says 23, so and that's 23. So basically I just turn both off just in case. And we'll go upstairs and test and see if the switch is actually turned off or not. So make sure it's off and there's no electricity on the outlet, okay? All right, so now we are upstairs. I just want to verify that my switch that I want to replace is turned off completely. So the light doesn't shine up. And uh, if you have a security light that's um, that's uh, motion sensitive, make sure the motion sensitive part is turned off and you'll be able to test whether the light is working or not. Otherwise, it might be steer hot and uh, you open the switch and you get shocked. Okay, so make sure it's turned off or the circuit break uh, you turn off is, is the right one. Okay, it's, it's very dangerous working with electricity, so make sure of that. And if you're in doubt, just hire an electrician and uh, change the switch for you um, it shouldn't cost that much okay but over here I'm doing it myself so I made sure it's turned off I triple checked and now we can um, go back and work on the switch and replace it with the old one to the new one okay I guess the tools I have is very simple just some flat hat and uh, Phillips screwdrivers and uh, there's sesame hello and uh, so that's the Z-Wave switch Okay, and uh, this one I'm probably not gonna need. And of course some pliers just in case I need to use it. Now let's go ahead and start it. And if you saw before, on the wall, we first remove this panel. Okay. Depending on your home setup, it might slide. It might be slightly different. If you have a different kind of switch that's like smaller you can get the um, the compatible smaller z-wave switch um, with with your panel but mine is kind of wider so we we use we use this one okay and I'm sorry if I'm doing it slow because I'm doing it with one hand but hopefully it works and once I install this our configure the panel on the uh, security panel okay so now we have the thing opened you can see it's it's situated inside like that which have a couple more switches to take off okay so now I'm gonna And again, depending on your home and the age of your home, all those steps might be slightly different. But whatever I have is pretty generic and most people should have the similar switch. If not, if you have the old like small knob switch you want to replace to a new one, you can just get a different panel, which they have for sale at major um, retail stores for the hardware, like Home Depot and Lowe's. 
So you can just get one of those panels at Home Depot and install the Z-Wave switch on because the size will be same, okay? Or at least close. See, I can directly just put this old panel to the Z-Wave switch. There's a slight fitment problem, but it works. Try to focus. So, yeah, let's take uh, one more screw off and we should be able to get this thing off. Oops. And I actually installed those switch myself when uh, we bought the, the house. It's fairly easy, but again, just make sure your electricity is off for the switch, otherwise it's really dangerous, okay? So now the switch is kind of hanging because there are some wires that's, um, that you plugged inside. Let me double check just to make sure the, the panel is off. I don't have my multimeter with me, but I just tried to test this. So yeah, it's off. Okay, no electricity is good. You just touched it. Yeah, no electricity. Okay, so when you pull it out, this is a single switch. So it only have a couple really easy to wire, um, like, a couple wires that you need to uh, be sure of and uh, each configuration might be slightly different so for this one the black wire um, is actually looped through the screw and the green wire is is actually inserted into this spring loaded hole right over here um, let's take a look at our z-wave device and see what configuration they have, okay. So, it have three areas. One is load, one is line, and one is neutral. And of course, I think the ground is over here. Let's see the configuration. Okay, here is a shot after uh, proper wiring. Um, every home is different, so, and every wiring situation is different. I would highly suggest you read through the instruction manual. And if the wiring uh, shown in my video or the instruction manual is different from your home's wiring the color is different make sure you consult a electrician okay because this is dangerous stuff you can get electric electrocuted by improper wiring situations okay so um this is for my home um, on the bottom is a line which is where the electricity comes from and on the top is the load. This is where uh, the line, this is actually going to the security light outside. And if, you're, if you took your switch out before and you don't have a white wiring, this is a neutral wiring, which is required for the switch. So it's also included in the package. You just put this white wire, put one end to the neutral position, the neutral hole, and the other end you find a whole bunch of white wire bundles inside. Try to take it out. See inside there, um, with a um, with a cap. So that's where you put this wire in, and screw it back into the cap with a whole bunch of other wires. This is required. Um, if your old switch doesn't have the white wire, um, you need to add that to this new switch, and of course add it to your neutral wiring inside your electric box. And the next step would just be trying to wriggle it around and put it back in. All the wires are like um, very thick gauge, so it's hard to put it in. So I'm gonna turn off the video and try to wriggle it back and come back later, okay? So now I'm just gonna put the new device, screw the new device back into the plate on the wall. 
and uh, just as how you took off your old device, the new device installs the exact same way as your old device. And uh, once you've finished put this, you'll be able to um, put the panel up onto the extra hole over here and secure it. So the installation should be complete. And now my challenge is how to find a way to make it sit flush because my electric box is kind of small. So I'm just gonna try to use some force and hopefully it's going nicely, almost. So now it's kind of flush on the top. We need to make sure it's flush on the bottom as well. And I'll just keep turning until it's it goes in all the way. It's a little bit tilted, but I guess it's better than it's not sitting flush. You have some small room to adjust because the, the screw hole is kind of um, a elongated shape, so you'll be able to do some micro tweaking, tweaking to make it 90 degrees straight against the wall. And I'm gonna try to use my other hand so it might not record. Whatever's okay. All right. Well, it's almost straight. So uh, let's just leave it like that and put the panel on. And I'll fix the straightness later on. Okay. It's there is a slight misadjustment, I mean slight misalignment, um, but it works. So we just caught at that. Okay. Find my original screw, which I think was a white short one. Okay, like that. And screw it back in. So I align the first one and try to put this in as well. Use your hand, just make sure it's aligned, and then you can uh, screw it in with your screwdriver. And we're after this, we're let's see. Somehow this screw is not fully compatible with, um, let's see, I know what's going on. I think it's because there was something behind, there was something behind the screw hole um, on the other side, so it's really hard to screw in, but again, I'm just using some extra force, not too much and just make it kind of flush with the wall. Okay, like that. And, and that's the basic installation, like clean. So the switch is installed. Now let's go downstairs and turn on the power and say Vi actually installed it correctly. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually restore the power to my bedroom and we'll go upstairs and see if it actually works and uh, hopefully there's an indicator light so i know it works okay and finally after the installation and turning on the um uh, turning on the power to the bedroom the blue led indicator just light up which means it's properly wired and ready to go and uh if I hit the switch on the top, it'll open the light, and on the bottom, it turns off the light. So let's open the light and see if the security light turns on or not. Okay. And of course. is working just fine and uh, let me try to turn it off and see it's actually all right off and on and off so it works perfect 
now we just need to go and configure the um, the security touch panel and see how we add the Z-Wave device to the control panel so we can control it on the cell phone or on the computer wirelessly. All right, so now we're at the security panel. Um, I'm gonna add the switch to the system. So I'm gonna ask my wife upstairs to push the um, power on button. Hopefully um, the device would be added. And uh, let me go into this add device settings. So basically you need to go to settings and then advanced settings enter where you enter account. your master passcode. Um, it's different from your regular passcode. It's, it's the one that uh, the security company gave to you. So you'll be able to access the installation panel. Uh, it's over here where you go to home control devices to add your Z-Wave light switch. Okay, so I'm gonna click add device and uh, I'm gonna ask my wife to push the power up button, the power on button, and we'll see what happens, okay? All right, guys, so I wasn't able to record the actual pairing process. Um, somehow I had stopped recording key, um, but over here, I'm still gonna show you guys once the device is added, um, it's gonna look like that. So basically, um, it detected my light and asked me to put a customized name over here, which I used security light and I just hit enter and the light is actually added into this panel. And now it's it's actually fully ready to use. Um, if I show you guys, let's go to home control and the lights. If I show you guys the security light right now is on. Um, I, let's take a look outside. So as you can see, the light is working just fine. And uh, I can quickly turn it off. Over here on my touch panel, I can also turn it off on my cell phone or on the website or on any device that you can control your um, home security. So basically I hit, I select this light, I can turn it off. And if we go over there and take a look, the light is off. Okay, quickly turn it back on. And I can also at the same time turn on the light in the living room so it gets security light Oops. on. Light on. Yep. So now the light is both turned on, which is pretty cool. And now I don't want my living room light. I can turn my living room light off light and leave on. the security light on. And that's how easy it is to um, control your Z-Wave device on a touch screen, a home security panel. And it's also very easy on your phone as well. Um, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to show you guys later in a different video. But uh, right now, let's go back to the website. I'll show you guys how to set a schedule to have your security light turned on and off at a specific time. Okay, so now we are at the um, con I mean the configuration page for my security system I use FrontPoint and uh, the FrontPoint uses Alarm.com as their security system configurator and it's very easy, extremely easy to use. So basically if I want to add this new Z-Wave light I, um, or put it on a schedule, I just go to rules, which is right over here and I can create a specific rule for the security light uh, simply by clicking the top right corner it says add new rule and down here it says light schedule so basically I've already set up a security light schedule for it to turn on at 4 p.m. and turn off at 6 a.m. in the morning um, of course instead of hitting the add new rule I can just go in here and hit edit so you are see, it's basically the same thing as add a, add a role, but um, over here I'll show you the different options available. Mm, over here, you can name your um, rule. So basically I just said turn on security light at dusk. Um, and over here, 
you can select which light you want to turn on. So over here, I only have my security light to be turned on for this rule, and it's on for all days. You can customize which day you want it off. You just simply simply hit, you know, to make the gray so it's off. And I have a I have it on for every day, so it turns on every day at a specific time. Turn on at time of the day. It's four p.m. and ultimately turn off at six a.m. in the morning. Of course, you can further customize it by turning it on at sunrise or sunset. And you can also, the cool thing is make the time approximate. So if you're away and you want to have people believe that you're actually home turning on the light yourself, you can set it approximate. So within this 45 minutes frame, it selects a time to turn the uh, light on based on the time that you've selected. Or it, can also be based on the sunrise and sunset time within 45 minutes of that time, which is really cool. Once you have everything selected, just, I mean, configure, just hit save, and it will save your options. And now you have this rule running 24-7 uh, every day, which is really nice. Um, so this is basically uh, how to configure your Z-Wave Lite, as well as the previous videos on how to install the Z-Wave Lite from GE. And every other Z-Wave light, it's similar. Um, and if you use one of those services provided by alarm.com, it's extremely easy to configure and uh, customize. So if you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section and uh, I'll be happy to answer for you guys. And if you like this video, please hit like and hopefully I'll be able to make more videos for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and take care.